We're living in a time when it's safe to ask big questions. Questions like, how did our universe begin? What is it made of? How might it ultimately end? Are there civilizations out there beyond our own planet Earth? In today's society, we have the resources, the technology, and the freedom for people, ordinary people like myself, to spend their careers and spend their lives pursuing answers to questions like these. In this talk, I'm going to take you on a journey on my own adventure to try and understand more about how the universe was born. When you look out at the night sky, you're used to seeing beautiful images, like the Milky Way here, stretched out above the South Pole. Structures, like the planet Jupiter, imaged with the Cassini Space Telescope. And complexity, like the Messier 101 galaxy, the spiral galaxy, imaged with the Hubble Space Telescope. But if instead you were to step back and look at the entire sky, and choose to look not with optical light like our eyes see, but with a different color stretched way out, more like the light that our car antennas are able to see. Look in the microwave band. Then you would see a sky that looks very different. And indeed, that is what we have been working on imaging. The COBE satellite brought down this image. This is the entire night sky stretched out across the canvas here. When we look out with the COBE satellite, and look in the regime where most of the light in the universe exists, we see a truly uniform place. The universe appears the same everywhere, and it appears the same when we look out in every direction. Indeed, from all of our measurements and our observations, the laws of physics, the laws that govern how the universe grew up, expanded, and came to be, appear to be the same everywhere. In this talk, I'm going to take you on my own journey to build a new telescope, a telescope in the center of Antarctica, at the very South Pole, to look up at the night sky and learn more about our universe. Throughout all of history, humankind has been exploring. We walked out of Africa to, to settle new civilizations. We sailed the seas to find new lands. We walked on the moon. We sent robotic probes and landers to distant planets to sample their soil and learn about the air on, on, on those locations. Physically going places has its allure, but there's another way to explore, a way to reach the very depths of our cosmos, and that's to look out with telescopes, to look out and explore by absorbing the light that's being emitted by the distant reaches of our own universe. And that's a very special way to explore. Let me tell you why. With a telescope, we're able to explore not just space and physically look places, we're also able to explore time. Our telescopes are time machines that take us back to a different era. Let me explain how that works. The people here sitting in the front row are about 10 feet away from me, and light travels at a fixed rate. Light travels about one foot every billionth of a second. So in this snapshot, I see all these people now as they were about 10 billionths of a second ago. And when I look up to the very back row, maybe about 150 feet away, and I take a snapshot now, I see these people in the back row as they were about 150 billionths of a second ago, because that's how long it takes that light to reach me here at the front of the stage. Now, the star that is nearest to our own sun is about four light years away. It takes four years for that light to reach us. So if I were to take one of you and stick you on that star, and then take a snapshot, you're there right now, and take a snapshot of you right now. What I would see is the light that you emitted, the image of you four years ago. I would see you as a young child. And if there are young adults in the room, 19 years of age, if I take you to the next star, for, uh, for which it takes about 19 years for that light to reach me, I would see that person now as they were as a baby. So indeed, if I take this whole room and spread you around our, our local stars, I would be able to, with a single snapshot looking out of all of you, I would be able to see you through all the stages of growth, as some of you were as babies, as some of you, you were as children, as many of you are right now in the local environment. In this manner, I could learn a great deal about how people grow up, how humans grow, by taking a snapshot of people at different locations. I would have a time machine to go back and see this growth. 
So it is with astronomers that are looking out at stars and galaxies. When we look out and see galaxies that are millions or hundreds of millions or billions of light years away, we are seeing an earlier stage of evolution in our universe. Indeed, we can look at the universe as a whole, and by looking further and further and further away, that light took a long time to get to us, and we learn about the universe as it was as a youth, as a child, as a toddler, as a baby, and at its very conception. So in this manner, when you think about these telescopes, or the telescope that I'm about to show you at the South Pole, you should think of it as an exploration vehicle to take us to these dis distant lands and places, but also as a time machine that takes us back to the very earliest moments in the history of our own universe. So in, in, in this talk, I'm going to take you to Antarctica to explore one of those telescopes. Now, in looking out at the cosmos, we've learned a whole bunch of things. We've pieced together the story of our universe. One of the things that we, we measured very early on is that when we look at galaxies, those galaxies that are close to us are moving away from us. Those galaxies which are further and further away from us are moving away from us faster and faster and faster. If you put this information together, what it tells you is that the universe we live in is growing and expanding. And if you run that movie, that growth backwards in time, there was a time a little while ago when things were much closer together. And if you run that movie all the way back to the beginning, there was a time when the very structure of space was all on top of one another. Every point in space-time, every point in this room set on top of it, it, itself, as was the case for everywhere in the universe. We, we refer to this as the Big Bang the birth of our universe, the explosion that created the space and the time and the matter and the structures that we see as such beauty out in the night sky today. So let's go now to the South Pole and explore this new telescope that we've been building. The South Pole telescope stands about five stories tall. It was built by a collaboration of universities and labs throughout North America. When we began designing and building the telescope, when the iron workers and the designers were making the draw drawings of the telescope, cutting out the metal and welding it together, we didn't yet have the technology to operate the camera in the telescope. We didn't know how to build the detectors that would image the night sky. So in tandem with all of this work to put the telescope together, we were simultaneously developing and building the camera that was able to image this very special type of millimeter wave light. And we had the technology experts, the astronomy experts from throughout North America working on this, but a great deal of the work was done inside universities. And so it was university students, people not much different from the people in this room, not much older than the people in this room, that bore the majority of the adventure to put this together, that tested the detectors, integrated them into a camera, cooled that camera and made sure it could operate at the temperatures and, and, and the uh, environment that it would ultimately work in, then ultimately put this together and brought it down to the South Pole to make it work. Let's get back now to the bottom of the planet. 90 degrees latitude south, the geographic South Pole. This is the path we walk from the place, the station that we sleep in, out to the telescope. To get the telescope there, it had to be built such that it could be broken down into many small pieces. It was first shipped from North America to the coast of Antarctica, and then taken in, in small pieces aboard C-130 propeller planes like this one. It took 100 flights from the coast of Antarctica to the South Pole to, to deliver the telescope there. Why on earth would we want to do astronomy from the South Pole? It's cold. The food isn't anything like we saw in the last images. It's cold. That is fantastic, because water vapor freezes out and falls to the ground. There is almost no water vapor in the atmosphere above the South Pole, and that water vapor obscures the images of our telescope. Beyond that, the level of the ice is about three kilometers high. So the altitude of the South Pole is comparable to the height of the highest peaks in the Canadian Rocky Mountains. We're high up through the atmosphere, and that provides us with a fantastic view out at the cosmos. With this telescope, we're able to see out beyond the, the images that I showed you earlier, the, the planets and the stars and the galaxies, to a time in the universe before these things existed, before they had evolved yet. 
to look back towards the Big Bang itself. And indeed, the, the image that, the most important image that we bring back is something like this. The light that, that was cast out and exploded from the Big Bang, the light that we refer to as the cosmic microwave background light. We see this in every direction, and we see it as the explosion of the Big Bang. We model, study, and understand the fluctuations, the ripples, the extra intensity, the beauty of this light, and compare it to the physical theories and mathematical equations, which, explain how, which are thought to explain how the universe evolves. We can also use this light, which illuminates everything in the universe, to highlight structures. Most astronomers, when they look out at galaxies or other things, they're looking at the light that is shining in the stars. And that light gets harder and harder to see when stars or galaxies are further away from us. And so it becomes impossible to have an accurate image of how the universe was born or grew up, because the things that are most interesting are the hardest to see. By using this light, we illuminate the whole universe, and instead of looking for the light that's coming out of large objects, we look for the shadows that is cast in this light from those lar large objects. The most interesting objects to me are the biggest things. We have stars, which together form galaxies, like our own Milky Way, and the galaxies are grouped together in clusters of galaxies. These are the largest gravitationally collapsed objects in the universe, and understanding their evolution, how many there were and when they first came to be, is, is the quest to try and understand the evolution and the development of the universe. And this is one of the things we've been able to do with this South Pole Telescope, see galaxy clusters out to any distance. Right now, we're spending all of, our times in our all of our time in our labs trying to develop a new type of camera that's even more sensitive. While we're taking images at the South Pole with the South Pole Telescope, we're developing a new type of camera that is much more sensitive and will be able to not just image the light that's coming from the Big Bang, that light that in this case, was emitted when the universe was the equivalent of about one human day old. If you take the age of the universe and equate it to a human lifetime, it's about a day old when that light came out. I'd like to see beyond that and see the first moment of the Big Bang. We can't do that by looking with light. Instead, we're going to have to look at the gravity ripples that are emanating out of that explosion. And our new quest is to build a camera that can use this light as a photographic plate and image it to the precision that we can see these gravitational ripples. That's my big adventure. That's the big quest that I'm trying to understand, the birth of the universe. When you go home tonight, I hope you'll take some time to think about your big questions, your big adventures. And I'm quite confident that if a few people in this room decide to spend their lives pursuing whatever their questions are, there will be answers to these questions. Thank you.